If you're planning on being more active this year, this is the perfect video for you because I'm going to be walking you through everything I've learned on my fitness journey over the years and everything you're going to need to know before you start yours. Before I get into it, I do just want to say I am not a registered dietitian or nutritionist or PT. This is just what I've learned on my journey and I hope it can be helpful to you and yours. The first thing I would recommend is to make it fun. You need a reason to get into the gym in the first place, right? I've had both aesthetic and non-aesthetic goals over the years and I found that the non-aesthetic ones are actually the ones that consistently keep me showing up because they're the ones that are easier for me to measure my progress on. So the first thing I would recommend is to choose a couple of non-aesthetic goals that you can keep working towards. These can be anything from do a pull-up, do a push-up, do 10 free-form tricep dips, do a single free-form tricep dip. They're actually really hard. Do a muscle up, do a handstand, anything that's going to get you into the gym regardless of what your physical body looks like. And of course, do the workouts that you enjoy. There's no point forcing yourself to go into the gym and do an hour's worth of strength training if you don't enjoy it. That's just not sustainable and it's not going to keep you coming back. So experiment and find a type of workout that you enjoy because otherwise it's just going to be a phase. But if you enjoy it, it doesn't matter how much time you take off, you're always going to find your way back because it's something that you actually want to do. After you found a workout that you enjoy, forget the all or nothing mindset and be realistic about your schedule. Remember this isn't a phase, so you want to make this as part of a lifestyle that you can actually sustain. If you know that realistically you're too busy to go into the gym more than three times a week, don't make a schedule based on you being at the gym more than three times a week, it makes no sense. It's better to make those three times a week that you're actually in the gym as effective as possible, as opposed to having a five day split that is just based on what you ideally want to do and then you're never actually there. If we're talking strength training, for a three day workout split, I'd recommend to do three full body workouts split out throughout the week. So maybe on a Tuesday, on a Thursday and on a Sunday, or on a Monday, on a Wednesday and on a Saturday. For a four day split, I'd recommend a posterior versus an anterior split so basically the back muscles of the body and then on the second day the front muscles of your body i like this type of split because it means that if you do manage to get into the gym more than that you can make those fun workouts you know something like cardio yoga pilates so you have a range and you still have your core workouts done the anterior and the posterior but on top of that you can also get in anything bonus. This is my current split and it's been working really well for me. And if you're lucky enough to get yourself into gym five days a week then I'd recommend either push pull legs if your focus is on upper body or if your focus is on lower body then three days lower body and two days upper body. So you can do glutes and quads, upper body, glutes and hammies, upper body, glute isolated workout, you know one of those with higher rep range and just a lot more focus on individual glute muscles. Now for the workout itself, five exercises done correctly within your workout is more than enough. And by done correctly, I mean training till near failure. So you have one or two reps left max in the tank. Your workout should be including three types of exercises. Number one, your compounds. Number two, your unilaterals. And number three, your isolation. Compound exercises are exercises which utilize multiple muscle groups for the same exercise. It's important to put these in at the beginning of your workout because you want to make sure that most of your strength is going to these exercises. Ideally, you'd be including two or three of these in a workout and these include things like squats bench, deadlift, pull-ups, shoulder press. And then you have your unilateral exercises, which are exercises which focus on one side at a time. I like these exercises a lot because they really help me focus on my mind-muscle connection, you know, because you've lowered the weight so you can really focus on form a lot better. And they also help with muscle imbalance. So if one side is stronger than the other side. For example, I find that my left arm is a lot weaker than my right arm. I especially see this on the bench because it kind of like flares outwards, whereas this one has already kind of got the bench up. So doing a unilateral exercise will help even this out by starting with your weaker side, pushing that to its limits and then matching that with your stronger side. Examples of this type of exercise include lunge, single arm curls, single leg RDLs and single arm rows, that kind of thing. Things where you're using one side at a time. And then you have your isolation exercises, so exercises which focus on one muscle group only. So these exercises provide definition to a certain part of your body and also put focus on certain muscles that may not be as 
active or is engaged during the other exercises. So examples of these exercises include things like leg extensions, which are quad specific, leg curls, which are hamstring specific, tricep extensions, calf raises. So very, very, very niche to a muscle group. And your plan should include a range of reps. So for example, six reps of RDLs, 10 reps of hip thrusts, 12 reps of kickbacks, 15 reps of calf raises. You don't want to be sticking to one very specific rep range, you want to have a variation of them. This is important because certain muscles respond better to different rep ranges. So calves will respond better to a higher rep range than a lower rep range. The rep range for hypertrophy, which means muscle growth, is between eight to 12 reps. So if your goal is to grow muscle, then I'd recommend that most of your exercises sit between the eight to 12 rep range. And if your objective is strength or power, then the rep range is two to six reps. So the way you should be approaching your exercises is you find an exercise, use a weight. You can do eight reps of that. Great. Keep going until you can do 12 reps of that. When you can do 12 reps of that, increase the weight. Of course, you won't be able to do as many reps and then you work your way back up to 12 and then increase the weight. And that's how you get progressive overload. Now, once you pick a schedule and a workout plan, stick to it for at least eight weeks. Don't change up your exercises every single workout because you won't be able to do the progressive overload. The only way for you to progressively overload an exercise is to stick to one exercise and increase the amount of time under tension, the amount of reps that you're doing, um, the amount of weight that you're doing for that exercise. So that's why it's important to stick to an exercise consistently for a while before you switch it up and then start another plan. So essentially changing up your exercise every single workout just hinders your progress. Let's touch on losing weight a little bit because I feel like that's a goal for a lot of people. If you want to lose weight, cardio is a very, very helpful tool. Yes, but it's something I would recommend doing after your lifts. I feel like a lot of people don't really know that strength training is really important for your weight loss journey because muscle mass boosts your metabolism. So you could be eating the same or more and burning more calories throughout the day without you even knowing. And that's why I'd recommend prioritizing strength training. So starting your workout session with that and then doing cardio at the end. I would say that uh, half an hour of cardio at the end of your workout is more than plenty, but that's because I don't personally like cardio and dedicated cardio your days can also be great which is why the anterior and posterior days work great because then if you do have that extra fifth day you can just make that cardio day where you just spend half an hour on the stairmaster or half an hour on an inclined treadmill walk and just a little note that if you find yourself getting hungrier after you start going to the gym that's completely normal. You're exuding more energy than your body is used to. So of course it's going to want to fuel itself a little bit more. It's completely natural. Don't let it scare you and just make sure that you're fueling yourself with high quality foods. Speaking of food, to grow muscle, you should be aiming for 1.7 grams of protein per kilogram. You don't need to track if you don't want to. In fact, if you have a history of disordered eating, I would recommend that you don't track unless you feel completely comfortable doing so. But you can hit your protein goals without actually tracking. Just make sure you have a high quality protein source with every meal. And of course, don't forget that all your meals should be balanced anyway. So you should have your protein, your carbs, your healthy fats, and your fiber. Your protein source is what's going to one, grow your muscle, and two, keep you full of a Longer. So having high protein meal is important in your fat loss journey because it keeps you satiated and satisfied for longer. Carbs are important for your energy. So if you're in a fat loss phase, I'd recommend prioritizing your carbs in your pre-workout meal and your post-workout meal just to give you the energy to push you for your workout. And fiber is key to your gut health. So don't forget about that. And here's a list of great protein sources that you can include with your meals. Now, despite popular belief, there's actually a lot of complete plant-based protein sources. The first being soy, so tofu, food, tempeh, which is also a fermented food, so it's really good for your gut health, but also chia seeds, hemp, pea protein, quinoa, and although a lot of other sources like seitan or lentils aren't on their own complete protein sources, pairing them with other foods will actually make them a complete protein anyway. So you can have lentils with wheat or you can have lentils with rice in a curry, you know, that kind of thing. And a tip to increasing the amount of protein that you have in your meals, you can substitute regular foods like pasta or noodles for higher protein versions. So like lentil pastas or edamame noodles. And the last thing I'll say on food is make sure that most of the time you're focusing on eating high quality whole foods. So foods in their rawest unprocessed forms. And for some noteworthy mentions surrounding your fitness journey, a cute gym set will truly elevate your workout. I cannot explain the power of feeling like you look good on your mentality, which just basically pushes you to your limits. When you see yourself in the mirror and you're like, wow, damn, I look good. 
you just push yourself. It's, it, it unlocks a whole other part of your potential. And if you know what I'm talking about, comment below your favorite workout pieces because we don't get keep around here. It's why I choose to spend so much money on my workout sets. I really do feel like looking good. It just makes me want to work out better. Shout out to Honor Active who keep me looking peachy. Now let's discuss supplements. I would say you don't need any unless you want to use them. If you do, I'd prioritize protein powder because it just makes it easier to hit that protein goal. The second thing I'd recommend is creatine since it's the most researched supplement. Saying that, I'm sure I read somewhere that a quarter of people are actually resistant to creatine. I think I may be one of them, so it may not actually have an effect on you. You may be one of that quarter of the population, so just bear that in mind. If it does, I've seen some crazy effects on people. And then the third would be pre-workout if you have a caffeine addiction like myself, or you just need that kind of boost and focus during your workout. I personally haven't bothered with anything else, but if there is something that you'd recommend, then comment it down below because I would give it a try. Now your first time in the gym can be really scary, I understand that. If you don't feel comfortable going on your own, ask anyone anyone at all in your life if they'd be willing to start their journey with you. If there isn't then I'd recommend having a look at personal trainers. They can take you through and just teach you the basics which can be really helpful and really really important. But trainers are really expensive so if you don't want to be spending money on that then you can join workout classes. Most of the gyms I think do them for free and they tend to teach you the basics so you know go to that, learn the basics and then you can start implementing them into your own workouts. If you want to just completely avoid interaction with other people then there's a lot of apps that have workout guides on them so there's the Evolve You app or Gains by Brains has just launched an app you know that kind of thing where they tell you how the exercise works and they give you an entire plan anyway and you can just go off on your own and do it. If you've just joined the gym and you're nervous to go or you're nervous to join a class plan a day where you just go out to scope out the gym you know things like figure out where all the machines are figure out where the water fountain is is there a water fountain where are the rooms because you know a lot of gyms have sections so you know figure out the layout where are the toilets that kind of thing just get yourself comfortable with the gym situation and just spend the day doing that if there's any machines that you need help with don't be afraid to ask someone for help you know with adjusting it with figuring out how it works i don't recall ever having had a bad experience with someone who works at the gym they're always so eager to help this is quite a big one don't use the scale as your only method of measurement the scale may go up and your physique will change but that, that's not a bad thing muscle is heavier than fat but it takes up a lot less space on the body. So one kilogram of muscle looks completely different to one kilogram of fat. So don't let the measurements on the scale throw you off and don't let it be the only way that you're measuring things. Better methods of measuring, I would say, are taking progress pics because you can see actual physical changes in your body that you may not notice day to day. Taking your measurements, with, you know, what, what do you call those measuring tape things? Seeing how you feel. Do you feel more energetic? Do you feel better within yourself? Do you feel better mentally? I feel like those are so much more important than what the number on your scale says. And finally, show up. Showing up for yourself is so much more important than perfection. If spending an hour in the gym feels overwhelming, then don't go for an hour. Go for 20 minutes. Go for five minutes. You can always build that up. There's no space anymore for the all or nothing mindset. Show up, be there. And then build. A little bit is absolutely always better than nothing. And remember, if you need any help on this journey, click the link in the description and we can discuss it in a one-to-one -one call. If these tips have been helpful and have inspired you to take the first steps on your fitness journey, then please give the video a thumbs up. It really does let me know that the content's been valuable to you. And if you have any questions on this topic, then comment them down below. I'm always here to help. I'm also planning on filming a lot more workout videos. So if you want any inspiration on what to do in the gym, then make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those. And now to make sure that I'm starting you off right, here is a video of the best glute exercises to get that booty popping. I'll see you there.